On July 11, 1934, the New York Times reports that Nikola Tesla has developed a death ray, a particle beam weapon that can destroy 10,000 planes at a distance of 250 miles. Tesla claims that a plant for producing this device could be constructed in three months at a cost of $2 million. Aside from the devastating offensive capabilities, Tesla believes that if he can successfully build 12 of these towers, his is a weapon to end all wars. Tesla's uh, famous death ray was a device which probably is very widely misunderstood and may have been one of the reasons why he didn't receive some of the respect by the scientific community that he may have well deserved. I think today a lot of people think of a death ray as a, as a phaser or some esoteric type device you might see on a science fiction movie. It's a plane! It's a plane. Tesla's claims terrify the public, but fascinate Hollywood. He is parodied in Superman, Superman cartoons as a mad scientist terrorizing New York with an electrothanasia death ray and an army of remote-controlled robots. Tesla's death ray was actually a particle beam weapon, a particle beam weapon which he had developed in the 30s. It was based on the principle of electrostatic acceleration of minute particles of charge similar to work being done by the Department of Defense. The basic concept is that you take a particle, a micro projectile it's called, and through the use of high voltage, you accelerate it to, to great velocities. The velocity being very high, the particle doesn't have to be very big to do a lot of damage. If you get a stream of these things being accelerated and projected, it will do substantial damage. You'll be able to knock down a missile in space, for instance. With only 12 such plants strategically placed around the United States, Tesla claims his teleforce can be used to keep the United States safe from all foes. With the world on the verge of World War II, the United States government takes an active interest in the Tesla death ray. Because he was a patriot, he offered this system to the United States government. The United States government developed and worked and engineered this particle beam weapon beginning in the 40s. We don't know what the extent of the research was or where it went from there, but we do have declassified documents released under the Freedom of Information Act that demonstrate the U.S. government's extreme interest in Tesla's particle beam weapon. The New York Times states that Tesla's death ray, which can send concentrated beams of particles through the air and cause armies of millions to drop in their tracks, is the most important of Tesla's inventions. But in an unprecedented decision, Tesla makes the exploitation of his invention by any single government impossible. He distributes the plans in proprietary segments, like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. He gave it to the English, Canadian, American, and Russian governments so that they had to sit down together to collaborate if they wanted to realize the whole invention. He realized that people are not conscious enough to handle this information. That's why Tesla put these governments into mutual dependability. There's some evidence that Tesla had given the plans to the Russians who were on our side at that time. In the 1970s, Aviation Week showed a, an article on the Russian particle beam weapon. And Tesla's particle beam weapon didn't surface until about 10 years later when Andrea Puharch brought it out. And the schematics exactly matched the Russian particle beam weapon. Head of US Air Force Intelligence, Major General George Keegan describes the Soviet system. And what comes out of the end of this little magnetic tube are pulsed proton beams, 100 billion electron volts each at energy levels at 10 to the 10 joules. But that's just simply more energy than any man has ever conceived of in the United States. And then you have to bend that beam, and you have to burn it through the atmosphere, and you have to find an object to aim it at. Nikola Tesla sent a proposal to Russian scientists and engineers on May 16, 1935, concerning high voltage and the acceleration of charged particles. 
He received a list of follow-up questions from them in November of that year. Military scholars contend that the Soviets achieved a 100% Star Wars defense by 1968. We had learned through very sensitive sources that the Soviets in 1977 would test in space the most powerful laser in history, 10 times more powerful than any laser we have under development in the US. Finally, when I became chief of Air Force Intelligence, my first act of office was to put out an order stating that this device and this development would be the number one priority in Air Force intelligence. So we set up a meeting with 40 or 50 of the top nuclear scientists in the free world, from Edward Teller on down. And these scientists, for six years, under a $60 million secret project called Project Seesaw, had been trying to develop an electron beam to shoot down ICBMs, and they'd failed. And now, both in the White House and in the Department of Defense, there is an embarrassed silence as the technicians and scientists on both staffs, now having examined the massive body of research we did in the Air Force, suddenly realize that they may have misinformed the American public. Was President Ronald Reagan merely attempting to catch up with the Soviets in his development of the Strategic Defense Initiative? All we can do is make sure that technology becomes the ally and protector of peace. That we build better shields rather than sharper and more deadly swords. In so doing, maybe we can help to bring an end to the brutal legacy of modern warfare. As a result of America's delays in weaponry development, Tesla's discoveries are only now, nearly 100 years later, being adapted for both offensive and defensive purposes. The latest development, space-based particle beam satellites. The paper which showed the, the technology to make the anti-war machine was eventually published in the proceedings of the uh, International Tesla Society. So it is, it's in the public domain now how to do it. And what is uncanny is that when one knows today's Star Wars program, and, and the, the beam weaponry that has been selected, it is almost identical to what was proposed by Tesla. At the time that I came across the documents, I took it to experts in the aerospace field and asked them to look at his technique for generating high voltages. At the time, the aerospace firm I was working with was working on particle beam technology and they had a, a study group that was working on proposals to give to the government on um, directed energy weapons. I gave that proposal to the advanced projects research team and asked them to consider it. The only word that I ever got back from them was that they said it was interesting and they would say no more. Tesla certainly spoke of a very large series of very powerful weapons. I think that's a reasonable thing, and let's approach it this way. Certainly, I'm on record as saying the weapons exist and that several nations have weaponized them. We know that the Russians very early on were interested in things like free energy right out of the vacuum, and they were interested in weapons. What became of Tesla's weapon? It's never been heard from since. It may be something that's in a closet somewhere. It may be something that's used. It may be in orbit. We don't know. There is no question today that the Soviet Union has these weapons. And if what I put together is correct, and I'm absolutely convinced it is, three other nations of the world also developed those weapons and resoundingly checked the Soviet Union. The other three are friendly to the United States, not hostile. And I think that played one great part in the fall of the Soviet Empire. Three other nations today are indeed working on what I call the Tesla weapons or really scalar electromagnetic weapons. And these nations are not really friendly to the U.S. at all. So it's a much more dangerous world that has emerged. In an article published November 3rd, 1998, Bill Gertz of the Washington Times writes, the Chinese army is building laser weapons and already possesses particle beam weapons capable of damaging sensors on space-based reconnaissance and intelligence systems. If the People's Liberation Army has beam weapons, what about the U.S. military? <laughs>